Hey guys, it's Putin Plum here, or Morgan from the Caps, and in today's video guys, I'm going to be doing a top 5 community made buses in OMSI. So these are a mixture of right hand and left hand drive buses guys, this is all my opinion, so you know, this isn't this, I'm not basing anything on fact, this is just my opinion on what I think are the best community made buses in OMSI 2. So before we get the video started guys, I just want to ask, please could you leave a like on the video guys, all I want is 5 likes on the video. I mean, and it's not a lot to ask or anything, it's just because this video has taken me hours to make because I've also got to do all the different recording segments, get all the gameplay and all the narration and all the animations and stuff. It's taken me a long time to make the video guys, so please if you can leave a like that would be very much appreciated it and it only takes a few seconds of your time. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. <laughs> Okay guys, so coming in at number 5 is the Man Lion City DD. Now the reason this is coming at number 5 is, I think, compared to a lot of buses that you can get out there that have made in the community guys, this is definitely one of the most solid ones that I've found out of them all. So as you can see guys, um, what I'm demonstrating here is, it's pretty cool and it, it has this feature where when you have the station brake engaged, if someone presses stop, the bell will, the um, stop bell will trigger the doors to open automatically. Um, so yeah, it is a pretty cool bus, guys. It has a lot of nifty, nifty features that you would expect on, you know, a pretty cool bus. Although um, it does have quite a few flaws, which is why it is in the number five spot. And one of these is specifically its size. It is an absolutely humongous bus, guys. And as you can see, hauling it around here is a huge pain because you almost clip the curb in every scenario. And if managed, I think the person who modelled this bus modelled it a little bit too long as it is extremely long and getting around the corners. Um, another feature is, I don't think that that it is, it's not got as many features as a lot of the other buses guys that, that will be in this top five. And I think the texturing is, some of it is quite low res, you can't always make out what all the things are. And I think that does set it apart from a lot of the other buses in this top five. But I would definitely recommend getting this bus guys over quite a lot of the other ones that are in the community at the minute. It is fairly solid. Um, fairly nice to drive. It's not necessarily easy to drive due to its length, but it is quite convenient with the fact that you've got the automatic doors opening when the stop bell's turned on. Um, it's got a few features that you can see. As you can see, it's a little maintenance panel which I'm clicking now. It has um, automatic door control. Um, it also has the safety feature where if any of the doors are open, um, the actual gears won't engage, which I think is pretty nice. I mean, that's not on a lot of the buses. A lot of bus developers do choose to. Um, keep that out. As, as you can see, it's got fully working windscreen wipers, and there is a li little bit of um, gameplay coming up in uh, about a minute or so, where it it has double windscreen wipers, guys. So rather than just having the windscreen wipers on the bottom as well, it also has on the top deck. It has windscreen has windscreen wipers, which I think are pretty cool. And as you can see, I'm just going to demonstrate the automatic doors now. So as you can see, the bus is now just pulling into the stop. I don't have any passengers on this run, but. Um, as, as, as you can see guys, um, the doors automatically open. So there you go, I did not press anything, all I did was engage the station brake and the doors automatically opened. So out of say 10 guys, I'd probably give this bus a 6. I'd definitely give it a recommend, but I wouldn't say um, that feature wise it compares to a lot of buses in this playlist. Uh, so yeah, so the Man's Line City DD guys, that is the number 5 spot. And as you can see here's the demonstration of the double windscreen wipers which I just think it's not <laughs> no, no mind-blowing feature but I think it's pretty cool compared to most buses do not have this feature okay guys coming in at the number four spot is the Volvo Wright Eclipse double decker version now this bus does come by default with the Cotterell map, which I'm actually playing now. If you want to see a review of this map, go and check out the link in the description down below. But anyway, onto the bus review. So the reason it's got a number four spot is, um, I think it does have a little bit extra on top of the line City DD. So this bus has operational temperature control. It has a few extra features, and I personally think the bus has been designed a bit nicer compared to the other bus. Um, so 
This is a lot sh um, shorter length bus compared to the previous line City DD, so it's a lot easier getting around the streets of Cotterell in this case. Um, it is a little bit jumpy, I must admit. It does for some reason, as you can see here, it causes a few lag spikes, which I did have to edit out there, which is a bit of a problem really, because I think this is a fairly solid bus on the outside, but once you get into play with it, it does have a few problems. Now, I'm not going to slant this light bus completely. I do think it is pretty cool in the way it's designed. It's got a lot of features that you would expect on a bus that is an OMSI. And you could almost mistake it for a bus that's been um, implemented by the developers. Um, as you can see, the doors are... It's got a pretty cool door control. You don't need to have the station brake to actually clo open and close the door. And there's no feature where if the doors are open that you um, can't use the throttle or anything, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, it's obviously not realistic in the fact that most buses have that safety feature but it definitely makes it convenient so the interior of the bus as you just saw a quick snapshot there it is pretty cool i'm using the um cotterell livery here but as you can see it's a nice purple design the seats are designed nice and sleek the texture is nice and high res and yeah i think it is a fairly solid bus guys as you can see here i'm just messing with the temperature control and it also does have a ticketing system and it also has chains so if you choose to play with the ticketing system on you can definitely do that and yeah guys, I think it is a fairly solid bus. Um, unlike a lot of buses where you have to just purely play with the keys because the buttons and stuff aren't implemented on the actual dashboard of the bus, this isn't the case with this bus. As you can see, you have full door control, you have the ignition control for the engine, you have the electrics control. You have basically control for every feature that you actually need on the bus without needing to assign hotkeys and stuff. So it's a fairly basic bus, guys. It's not anything out of this world, but it is a pretty cool bus. I think it does honourably deserve the number 4 spot in this top 5 playlist. Ok guys, so coming in at number 3 is the London City Bus. So this bus is on the list as I think it is, compared to most of the buses that you can get in the um, OMSI community, it is one of the most solid buses that I've actually found. I believe it is based off of the Enviro 400, the Alexander, Alexander Dennis Enviro 400 that is. But it obviously has a Scania chassis and um, yeah, it's pretty cool. But I'm not going to bore you with all the technical specs. But as you can see, I just think that compared to most of the buses, it is really solidly made as you can see in this gameplay. So I'm just reversing out a Cotterell bus station. And it is really solid guys, all the textures are nice and high res. You've got a working ticket machine and you also have um, coins, which you can't actually see but they're connected to the door, they're on a little hatch that you um, have to click and then you ha have access to the coin tray. But yeah, it is a really solid bus guys, um, obviously you said it has a working ticket machine, it's got working change, um, all the animations are really good, like you've not got any sort of really bad animations, you've got all the indicators work, and quite a lot, like a lot of the buses on this playlist, it does share the fact that you can play completely without hotkeys if you really want to. I mean, I don't really like doing that because I like to be nice and speedy, so I like to play with hotkeys. But you can play entirely without hotkeys if that's what you really desire, which I think is a really nice feature, guys. It does have a couple of letdowns. For start, there are some of the buttons, as you can see on the dashboard. I've not really demonstrated them in the gameplay, but sort of towards the right, sort of where you've got the door control, the red and green buttons. Above those, there's a few light controls and stuff, and the heat controls and stuff that doesn't really work. And there's also some air vents and stuff that don't really work, but so it does have the odd feature that doesn't really work very well, but for the most part, everything in the bus is functional. As you can see, that's the electricity switch, which I just tripped to there. And yeah, I think other than that, it's a, it is a really solidly made bus, guys. So, the London City Bus at number three. Okay guys, so coming in at the solid number two spot would be the Scania Omni City. Now, if I'm entirely honest, this is my favourite left-hand drive um, bus. Mainly because it is completely, as you can see with the, with the look of the dashboard, it is absolutely loaded with features. You've got all of the temperature controls, you've got light controls, you've got buttons, which you can use to, to um, make the bus kneel so it goes to one side and stuff to allow people like who are in wheelchairs and stuff to get on the bus easier. Obviously, it doesn't really actually have a genuine function in terms of the fact that you know, there's no actual wheelchair passengers in OMSI unless you install it as a separate mod. But um, but yeah, by default there's, that doesn't really have a direct feature to it. But my point is with this bus, is it's completely lo lo loaded with features to the point where 
it has so many features that it goes above and beyond the basic features that you would expect. It's got more than just a door control and stuff. The fact that it actually allows you to kneel and stuff, it obviously doesn't serve a genuine purpose, but the fact that the function has been added into it just shows that the, 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 the um, designer has gone to many lengths to make sure the bus feels re as realistic as possible when you're driving it. Now, it is really smooth. I didn't really have many frame rate problems when I was driving this bus. Um, um, for this run, I wasn't actually running with any passengers. But as you, can, as you can see, it is obviously one of the bendy buses, which I think is really cool. And um, there's not really that many community made bendy buses. A lot of them are the single decker and double deckers. See, I think that is really cool. Um, if I'm honest, I can't really think of that many problems that um, you'll have with this bus. Um, it drives really well. Oh, as you can see, it's got functional windows, and basically everything on it is entirely functional. I like with the other buses that I really like. Um, you don't actually have to play with any of the hotkeys if you don't want to. You can just play purely with all the buttons that are on the dashboard, and it drives really well. It also has features on it, for example, like the safety feature when you pull up, you can't open the doors without the station brake being on, and also the um, accelerator it doesn't really work very well when you're turning to stop it from skidding and stuff, which I think is really cool that the designer has actually implemented features like that that are genuinely on the real bus to make sure that the experience from the person playing the game gets the most realistic, realistic experience. So yeah, the Scania Omni City gets a solid number two spot. And the number one spot goes to the Alexander Dennis Enviro 200. Now I have showed the London City bus in the number three spot, which is basically oh, yeah. this, is this guy's double-decker brother. But basically the reason this goes for the number one spot, guys, is an absolutely phenomenal bus to drive. But I will get the gripe out of the way first. And the gripe is that once you're playing it, you'll find that the sound isn't amazing. You don't have this cool skin that I'm driving it in now, this livery, this stagecoach livery. You actually have to download them separately. But I find that once you get the soundboard installed, the stagecoach livery, livery even, it feels actually like the bus that used to um, run around and do the routes near where I used to live. And when I was in the passenger view, I, it genuinely did take me back to the moments when I was on those buses because it just feels so realistic, guys. It's like with all the sound and everything, the interior, there's been, it's got really high definition textures. Obviously, I've never driven one of these buses, so I don't know what it feels like to drive. But it generally looks and feels exactly like the real thing. And unlike the Omni City, which I really like, it doesn't contain any unnecessary features. It doesn't contain the needling option and all the fiddly buttons that don't really do anything. They might do something really small, but the, the, it only has things that are genuinely functional to the bus and to genuinely affect the game. Which I think is a really nice feature compared to other buses. It's not, it doesn't feel claustrophobic. It's not completely full of loads of useless features that don't actually do anything, they're really confusing buttons. And you can play without using any hotkeys at all. You can just use the buttons that are, in, that are actually in the bus, which I think is really nice. So yeah, the dashboard's it's got a really nice dashboard layout. It's really easy to drive. I've not really had any problems with passengers like complaining about comfort or anything. It's really, it runs really smooth as well. And I'd have to say, guys, overall, it's just a really solid bus to drive. And if I'm honest, it is probably my favourite um, right-hand drive bus of them all. See, so, yeah, I think I'm going to have to end the video off here, guys. I will obviously leave links to all these buses in, the, buses in the description below if you want to download them. And yeah, thank you for watching, guys. And if you'd like to see any more OMZ videos, make sure to um, leave suggestions down below in the comment section. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any uh, latest and greatest OMZ content. Thank you for watching this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Goodbye from Pater Plum. Everything changes.